Welcome to this video about Neo4j. Neo4j is a NoSQL database, and specifically it is a graph database. What a graph database is, is a database that focuses on nodes, which you may have referred to in the past as entities, and relationships. It uses a language called SQL, CQL, and it's, which stands for Cipher Query Language. So we're going to create a small database of friends and we're going to use CQL to do so. So let's get started. This is our first SQL and it says create person Amber who's friends with a person Bill. Let's take a look at it closely though. The first thing we're doing is we're creating a node Nodes begin with an open paren and end with a closed paren. That simulates what a node looks like graphically, basically a circle or an oval. Inside that node, uh, I am using a label. The label tells me what kind of node I am creating. This is optional in Neo4j, but if you don't include a label, you're just creating a generic thing. In this case, I, want, I don't want a thing, I want a person. So I'm going to use the label person for Amber, who I'm about to create. The other thing you'll notice is I have a variable P in front of the label. The variable P is a placeholder or a stand-in for the node I'm about to create. And I can use that variable later on in the same SQL statement. All right, now. Notice that the person also has attributes. These are like fields and their values. And it's done in JSON. So here I have name. Name is the key and Amber is the value. So essentially this part right here creates the node, a person node, and the person's name is Amber. Okay, but we can move on. In addition to creating this node, I'm also creating a relationship. Relationships are indicated by a dash and then a dash with an arrowhead. So this is showing the direction of the relationship. And then relationships are always enclosed in square brackets. Typically relationships are written in uppercase letters. So this relationship is going to be friends with. So this shows that I have a person named Amber who is friends with another node. So here is our second node. And we are making a person again. Uh, we're going to refer to this person with F as a placeholder or substitute. And then we're going to give that person some attributes, in this case just one, the name, and this guy will be Bill. So when this part of the query is run, I will have Amber being friends with Bill. But there's more. If I follow this relationship to the end, I see there's more after this node. This is the Bill node, and Bill, notice this, another relationship, friends with, pointing to P. But P, as we know, is the stand-in for Amber. So what this query is going to do is it's going to create Amber, have Amber be friends with Bill, and also have Bill be friends with Amber. So it's a bi-directional relationship. And let's run this and see what we get. And here you can see Amber, and here you can see Bill, and in fact they are friends with each other. Great. Now, let's try a second Cypher query. Here, I want to make Amber friends with Crystal. But, you see, Amber already exists. I don't want to create Amber a second time. So, rather, I start with this match clause. The match clause is trying to find a person, again, using the label, uh, whose name is Amber. So, that should find the person we just created. And again, I will use P as the placeholder or variable for this person, Amber. Once I find this person, I move on to the second clause, the familiar create clause. Notice here I'm creating P 
is friends with. And now I have a new node, another person node. This time the name is Crystal. Now what this create command is going to do is it's going to create a new relationship, friends with. It's going to create friends with pointing to Crystal, a new node, a new person, but it is not going to recreate Amber. So, and then notice also what we've seen these return statements. Return statements are not needed for creates, but they help us to visually see what it is we just created. So I'm going to return P, which is the, the placeholder for our Amber object, and F, our placeholder for the newly created crystal object. Let's run it. And here we see, here's Amber. Amber is friends with Crystal. Notice this time, though, there is no reverse relationship. While Amber is friends with Crystal, Crystal is not friends with Amber. That's just the way life goes sometimes. You notice that there is no reciprocal relationship between the two. Fine. Let's do some more. So here's another SQL query. Uh, again, I'm going to match. I'm going to find Amber. And when I find her, I'm going to create two new things. I'm going to create this person called Zach and the, the friends with relationship between Zach and the already created Amber. I run this. Here's Zach. Zach is friends with Amber. Okay. Uh, let's try another variation. Here, I've already created Bill and I've already created Zach. But Bill and Zach aren't related to each other in any way. So I want to make them friends with each other, or at least I want to make Bill friends with Zach. To do this, I, f I use the match again, so I have to find the person whose name is Bill. But then it's a comma, and then I'm matching something else. I'm matching the person whose name is Zach. I use P for Bill, and F is the placeholder for Zach. Once I have matched those two, I have found the previously created person nodes. And all I have to create then is P, friends with F, which means that Bill will be friends with Zach. I run this, and there in fact is Bill, who's friends with Zach. In this example, uh, they should be very familiar at this point. Um, I've already created Crystal, so I want to match a person named Crystal, and I want to create that Crystal is friends with, ah, but I want to make Derek, and Derek is a new node. So this create statement will make the friends with relationship from Crystal, and will also make me a new person, Derek. And there you have it. There's one last variation I want to show you and has the following. So again, I've made Derek in the previous statement, so I want to match and find him. But then I want to create a relationship where he is friends with a new person called Elias. Okay, so far so good. We've seen this before. What we haven't seen, though, is in these square brackets, which is the relationship, we still have the friends with, but now we have attributes of the relationship. And which is possible in Neo4j. So in this case, we know that not only is Derek friends with Elias, but he considers that relationship to be the best of friends. He's a best friend to Elias, and he's been best friends with him since 1998. And then I can create this relationship as well. All right, now, at last, what I want to do is I want to kind of show us the results of everything we've done so far. So I'm going to bring up this CQL query and I want to match very simply P, any, any node P. Notice there's no person there, so it's just any node that happens to be friends with any other node. So this could be persons who are friends with persons, this could be persons who are friends with dogs, this can be dogs who are friends with dogs. I use P for the first friend, and I use P2 for the second. And notice that the relationship has no arrows. It means I don't care which way it points. 
I'm going to return P and P2. And when I run this, I see the entire network I've created. Bill and Amber are mutual friends. Bill is friends with Zach. Zach's friends with Amber. Amber is also friends with Crystal, who is friends with Derek, who is friends with Elias. And that ends our first video on how to create a very basic network in Neo4j.